Are you ready to figure out this relationship-ish? I'm Brittany. I'm Simone. And we are Relationship-ish. We are a podcast and platform that is the millennial perspective of all things related to love. We empower and encourage all healthy relationships, whether it's romantic, platonic, or self-love. It don't matter if you're single, entangled, married, engaged, confused. We we got got something something for everybody. everybody. What's up, y'all? This relationship ish. Moni XO, Simone. It's Brittany. And we in the big day. Yes, we back at it. That's right. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> it has been a minute since we've been together. It's been at least about three to four weeks, almost a month. That's right. We catching up. We drinking wine. Yes, we are. You know how we do it. If you got your glass of wine and you listen to this, you probably need some wine for this because mm-hmm. we're going to get into it. So, what the world is in a mess, you know, we got COVID going on, we got the world and racial civil unrest Mm -hmm. and everything, Uh, justice for Breonna Taylor and all the black lives that have been lost or affected by this, period. We are a black podcast, if you don't know. (laughs) I'm sorry, I think it's obvious. It is very obvious, but you know, (laughs) black lives matter. Going into this COVID thing and even sex thing, uh, Get, y'all need to get tested. Yeah. Y'all need to get tested. Because y'all nasty out right. there. <laughs> COVID <laughs> and STDs. Don't spread it. Mm. So, have you got COVID tested? I have gotten COVID tested, and this shit hurt. You know, it did feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it took I a while have, to get my results back. I was a little pissed, not going to lie. I feel like they need to change that up. Like, I feel like I've, I've read something, though, where they're trying to do, like, a swab or some shit. Yeah, like, I think some, some cities crap. are actually doing that. I heard in Chicago they do little swabs in certain places, but they actually went up in my Okay, because that, yeah. That, <laughs> it felt a little uncomfortable, no. but I will respect the lady that did it. She did it really fast, so it wasn't too bad. Like, the videos I didn't see on social media, like, that looked, you know, see, terrifying. I'm, I'm dramatic, so, you know, I'm kind of like, oh, but even though I got my nose pierced, yeah. like, I don't want y'all in my nose. No, right. too, so. <laughs> I was making all type of <laughs> ugly faces, like, <laughs> <laughs> but... I'm negative, so I Let's feel say, good. Snaps for that. Yeah. I am safe. I'm practicing social distancing and being smart and being safe. You know, mm-hmm. you can't really trust nobody. Mm-mm. With that same, nasty. yeah, no, they nasty. With that same energy, people are nasty, and y'all need to get tested. Exactly. Um, and we're talking about STDs now. Now, how often should you get tested? At least annually mm-hmm. or twice a year. But I feel like if you're more sexually active, you need to get tested a little more mm-hmm. often. I said, be, especially, don't be out here raw dog and thinking things sweet. Nah, nah, baby. I said I get tested every time I go to the doctor, which is typically right. twice a year. I so saw every six months. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, if you constantly have different sex partners, right. you need to, you know, go a little more consistently. Exactly. Um, be open about it with your doctor. I know a lot of people are scared to talk about their sex things with their partner, and I think if, that's and I think that's crazy. That's an open conversation that needs to happen because mm-hmm. your health is priority. I go every year annually. So, and I think you should just make it a thing. When you go to the doctor, just get tested. Just for your own safety and for your health. And guys out there, uh-huh. women, you know, more often go to the doctor because we already have a lot going on down there, mm-hmm. period. But yeah, I, I feel like know. guys, y'all just, you know, a little bit more lax. You know, maybe I'm a little ignorant. Maybe there are some guys that like, you know, they own their stuff. But generally speaking, from what I've seen in my experience, y'all don't go to y'all the do not go to the doctor, period. So, you know, you're not getting tested. So you don't know what you're spreading or who's spreading things to you. Let's be safe, mm-hmm. wrap it up, and go get tested just for your own safety for mm-hmm. both COVID and STDs. And then, like, to period. go off of that, you know, body count, body count. is a big thing uh-huh. for some people. It um, is. I necessarily, I care when it comes to, you know, my health, but I don't think I really care to ask somebody their body count. Yeah, especially not right away if you're, like, um, casually dating and you don't even know where this is going to go. They don't need to know for real right up top. Now, I feel like it depends on the relationship. If the relationship and you find yourself trying to be intentional with this person, Mm -hmm. then I think it's a conversation that should be had. And if they really real, they wouldn't really care because that was the past and I'm with you and, now. And to be honest, I've only, I don't know about women, cause, but like me personally, I've never asked, but I have mm-hmm. had men ask me my body count. Why do you think that is? Because they're insecure. <laughs> it's, 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 or, or they just expect, oh, if she's attractive or 
whatever exactly. or or she got a certain body type she must have been around but the thing is too what's funny is they don't ask like directly they'll kind of lie what, what have they said to you just some <laughs> girl how the <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't want to like say it wrong, but it was basically just like, you know, how many guys have you dated? You know, oh, been, they, been, been over, with, been, been at the house. Uh -huh. Who's been over here? Who I'm been like, in you? <laughs> you trying to, you trying to ask like how many people I slept with? with right. and, but I would ask. I would say. Does it matter? Are you right. going to stop talking to me? Right, because of that? Right. Ooh. Now, I think it's only concerning if, like, people have, like, a crazy amount. There's some people that have over 100. Now, to me, that's concerning. Have you heard of, uh, what's the boy that made? Uh, I don't judge. That's nasty. Bust I'm it down, sorry. Tatiana. Who, who's he again? Oh, Blueface. Blueface and has so many, um, his body count is insane. That's nasty, that's nasty to me. But, so, but I think he... that's, to me, that's where it gets kind of concerning, what it gets outrageous oh okay i just want to know what's the point of having <laughs> that many body counts yeah. honestly like how can you see yourself just having that many people i said like you said all the time that's a soul tie like, that that's is so many you know how many bodies are in your that's connected to your soul i know we're getting deep but no for real like <sighs> people don't understand i guess when you get older you realize why am I feeling empty? You keep giving your body away so many times, and you mm -hmm. have this void that you're trying to fill. That's a soul tie. So let's keep it real. If you didn't have sex with some people, some and shit. even if you don't even mess with that person no more, if they walk in the room, tell me you don't feel some type of way. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You could be over and done with them, but you know you didn't have you used to have sex with them, and all the time at one point. They walk in a room, you feel a little bit of a way. You know why? I say, it's a soul time. That's something, <laughs> you know, over time I've learned. Like, I, I never thought of those things uh -huh. until we started doing this. And right. Learning Same. those things. And mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, like, I ain't never think of it like that. Yeah. That's why you so angry at me. Yeah. Like <laughs> and you be wondering, like, why am I feeling this way or whatever? Man. Oh, little um, plug. If y'all haven't already, y'all should read the book Relationship Goals by Pastor Michael Todd with Trans Transformation Church. I'm read it. When I tell you that book is dropping all types of gems on relationships, whether you single, you in a relationship, you're in an entanglement, whatever, or married, it can literally help and shape your relationship in a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And obviously it has the guy component. I am a believer, you know what I'm saying? We are believers. Mm -hmm. But um even if you're not even a believer and you're kind of spiritual, I'm telling you it can really help you she even tell me to read the book i still yeah. have not but i'm you, going you to should. you should read the book and follow his sermons he has sermons on youtube it's called relationship goals and he just finished up his relationship goals reloaded um sermon series said, which was really good sending them to me i, I do too much. I, I really do be sending it to you because girl that sex sermon was like triggering i'm like whoa you know what i'm saying like all his sermons really have purpose for him. Just mm -hmm. as a young pastor, he's in his 30s, and he was so relatable to the younger generation and really all generations. I have never seen a pastor be so transparent about relationships and sex. Yeah. What we've been taught when we were younger and about sex in the church, they don't really coincide mm -hmm. like that unless you're married. Mm -hmm. But then even when you're married, the church don't talk about sex. And he talks about it. So he dives deep. I want to give too much away. Read the book. Um, go watch his sermons you will thank me later period okay. now before we get to the next topic i really want to touch on do you think that women or men take body count more serious like who's more sensitive towards it men I agree. period i agree <laughs> you what know if i gotta play that? the devil's advocate though but the reason why i <laughs> say that is because women are naturally more accepting a little bit, even though like they'd be like, girl, he a hoe, but that means he know what he doing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? At the same time, yeah. be like, he a hoe, let me see what he could do. You know, but- They get mad when he a hoe. They get mad, so it's kind of like contradicting, yeah. but at the same time with a guy, to me, it's more like an ego pride thing. Oh, wait a minute, I don't want my girl knowing like everybody that went up and through her. I don't want her to be no hoe. I don't want the guys been saying like, dang, right, that's so. who you with? Like, we all didn't hit that or like, oh, she didn't ran up the block, you know, with it or anything. You know why I think it's crazy about that though is that men are like that and yeah. have that mindset, but they the main ones. You doing know? that. But they the main <laughs> ones, yeah, doing that and like looking at Instagram models and strippers. <sighs> yeah. It don't make sense to it's me. It's very contradictory. I guess or if it's not your girl, it don't matter. Right. Huh? No, exactly. When it's not your girl, then it's like, okay. But if it's 
just any other girls like okay she can do that but that's crazy if you on their arm they're like oh no my girl can't do that no 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 or wear that first of all if you have a controlling man get rid of him now because <laughs> that is not okay or control a woman for that yeah um that's not control we do not play I that that's think very a toxic. controlling women is is worse than a controlling man too you know it, it, it's got that they're both toxic and not, they're they not both good. bad but yeah like control the men our women are smart <laughs> I mean, they finessing. <laughs> that's what that is. They are finessing that man. If he's <laughs> if she's controlling, she's finessing you, sir. Oh my goodness, that's funny. Now let's talk about entanglement. You know, I, I know it's getting word. a little, it's getting a little dated, but we, you know, we had to touch on it a little bit. <laughs> we had to touch on it a little bit. Did the you, thing is, did you listen to that song though? No, I did not. Yeah. I should play. Oh, I can play. It might be a copyright issue. I guess I'll see the uh, entanglement. I need song. to look it up. I think that's kind of hilarious. But entanglement is a new word for situationships. Mm -hmm. You know how we was big and saying situationships. It's really entanglements and situationships go hand in hand. They are essentially the same thing. They both toxic. They very toxic. You know, it's like a relationship, but it's not. You are entangled with somebody, um, especially physically, because you are most times having a uh, physical relationship with them. Okay, so my question is, so before I had a discussion with somebody and they said with a situation ship, mm -hmm. you can only have a situation ship if sex is involved. And I disagreed with it. Yeah, that, I, I disagree because you can still kind of like maybe do sex related things. So you don't you really have to have sex. An entanglement is that situation ship version like x-rated you know friends with benefits type stuff yeah like i think an entanglement even though they're similar to a situation ship maybe the entanglement is the sex part where a situation ship you could just you know go back and forth with somebody and not have anything involved i didn't think of it them. that way because entangled you are entangled i was like if you listen to that august i've seen the song he was like entangled in the sheet so <laughs> <laughs> that man a fool <laughs> that is hilarious oh my goodness that's funny but i, I August think and Jada. <laughs> I, I think that um an entanglement definitely involves sex definitely involves feelings mm -hmm. um i don't know like i think it depends on the person and what they're thinking about but i mean shit, it's all confusing and like don't make a time for that no nobody did. <laughs> in the long run situationships and entanglements are a waste of time because a lot of times they don't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's like you still doing the same thing, but they're not, oh, he's not really my man or that's not really my girl, but that's mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What kind of mess is that? Like it's and not no progression. That's something that I personally had to grow out of because mm -hmm. at first I was just like, you know, I'm I'm cool with, you cool know, with us it. dating. Yeah. Whatever. I was really title. same. I used to be very just comfortable and be like, okay, well, long as they like texting me and we like, I'm the only one yeah. with. It's cool. And I'm looking like thinking back, why was my standards? Yeah. Like, you and know, I said, why was I willing to accept that? Mm -hmm. You know, like you're worth more than that. You but somebody told more. me that they were like, why are you okay with that? Yeah. I, I will never forget. There was a guy long, long, long time ago, mm -hmm. and um, he was like, I want to buy you flowers. And I was like, I don't need no flowers. What are you trying to buy me flowers for? <laughs> he was like. Why right. wouldn't I buy like why wouldn't right. I buy you flowers if I, I want to be with you and date with you? And I was like, hmm. like that stuck to me, and that okay. was years ago. That was probably like when I was like high school, co getting to college type thing. Wow, like why not? I didn't think of that because you wasn't used to that. Yeah, so now it's kind of like a given thing where I mean, I personally love flowers, but I wouldn't say that I expect them, but mm -hmm. I'm worth. You getting me some flowers exactly you know like I, i'm worth some type of cute effort you yeah. know what i'm saying and that's how i kind of felt too i'm like if they can't even put in the minimal effort mm -hmm. and even more than that i don't want you to just give me minimal but like actually put some real life effort into Take it like, me on the date. Some, yes like let's not just chill at the crib like let's go out places like mm -hmm. show me a good time i show you a good time kind of thing let's really get to know each other because mm -hmm. netflix and chill all that old shit is played out it's an entanglement yeah <clears throat> it's, it's, i'm about to say that come over after 10 p.m like that's not okay okay so now we talked about entanglements 
Yeah. Let's talk about <laughs> open relationships. And I really want to talk about this because Brittany done got me into watching Insecure. I know She's so I'm late, late. y'all. She's so late, y'all. I'm hella late, but I'm on season two. I think I just finished season two, actually. With and Molly? Then, Lord. Man, I said, I hope y'all uh y'all watched Insecure. Y'all probably did already. But yeah, because that was that open one. marriage <laughs> shit. No, that's enough for me, Had me, me dog. confused that's as hell. That's enough for me, dog. That, that ain't a marriage to me. Me personally, you know, you do what you want to do in your own marriage, and that's up to those two partners in that marriage, but it's a big no for me. That's a, it's a and, hell no And for that me. ties into <laughs> when we talked about getting tested. Yes. Because if y'all watch Insecure, I ain't seen them show one condom on there. <laughs> no, they had no <laughs> condom. I ain't seen nobody going to the <laughs> clinic or anything, getting tested, the doctor's office, none of that. But no, I really want to know. I mean, it's kind of hard for us to tell because, like, you know how we both are with relationships, mm -hmm. but what is beneficial of having... An open relationship. Honestly, I don't know. I, I, you know, I really can't say because that's just really not my thing. <laughs> but mm. you know, if I were to try to look at it on the other side, maybe not feeling like you're tied down, but you know, you always had that one person. So to still explore your oats, oh, so your they oats, selfish, and then coming back to that person, like, cause you know, it's real. <laughs> my mama would always tell me, well, okay. So before I say that. Being in an open relationship is that, I mean, it doesn't necessarily consider if you're like bisexual or something like that. Mm -hmm. But my mama always used to say like bisexual people are greedy. Greedy? They, uh, you know, want kind of like the best of both worlds. But you know, at the same time, because I have friends that are bisexual, it's like, mm, I see where people are coming from if they don't know people that are bisexual, but... No, like they've been always kind of labeled as the hoes, if you will. But really, it's not even like that. I tend to see a lot of bisexual people like one sex more than the other. I would say, I don't think they necessarily are hoes, but you know, they kind of got the best of both worlds, you know. And they, the, they the do, eye. but at the same time, it's like they still not attracted to every man or every woman. Just kind of like... That's what I need to know. Yeah. It's because somebody's gay doesn't mean they want you. Exactly. And that's the same thing with bisexual people. Just because you're a man or a woman doesn't mean they want you or mm. the other person. So I think, you know, I see where people are coming from. Why people might say, oh, they're greedy. But I think that's very a negative um, connotation of them because mm -hmm. it's just like anybody else. Just because I'm heterosexual, it's not every man I see I'm attracted that's to. That's true. So... Yeah, so I think, you know, people have to kind of change their mindset when it comes to that. I mean, okay, so with open relationships, though, I, I guess I see how it's beneficial. Women, it's kind of hard to say. Women are typically, they don't want to share. Like Yeah, when you really think about it, women honestly don't want to share. And if they want there's to men invite a woman in, they're doing it for their their partner. Not yeah. because they want to do it. There's Sometimes I didn't see, you know, that women want to have another woman in cool but like they're kind of doing it to please their I just man don't see from what i've seen how it could go well and if you are actually in a committed relationship and bring somebody else in i just don't see how that could work like i right. mean i don't know i've never done it um Me so either. i can't judge or anything maybe it works for other people yeah. but people do polygamy all the time uh, just, I that's, don't know. that's big in cultures too that's a cultural thing too I but know. i just me personally What's mine is mine. Yes, <laughs> but she said it for me. What's mine is mine. You know, I just what's yours is keep yours. Exactly. I just couldn't see, you know, somebody else on what's mine. You know, like, and I think the same thing. How my partner would just not want another man on me. You Maybe know? I can take care of you. Right. <laughs> hey, you don't need no but yes. Right. I just think, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, if that was floats your boat and it works for your particular relationship, by all means, you know, we. I respect for it. It. We, res we respect that just me personally i just i couldn't do it you know maybe mm -hmm. one day on the show we'll have somebody enlighten us how you know it could be beneficial oh that would be dope that would be i would love to uh hear that conversation if there are any sister wives out there you, know, us up. <laughs> you know who we need to have on this show one what? day we need some swingers <laughs> yes we do need some swingers here in St. Louis, there is a big swingers community in what apparently, apparently. <laughs> so what we heard, um, it's in St. Charles, and what is that area called again? It's like Newtown. It's something. called Newtown. And if you don't know, you know the kind of slinger swingers, uh, kind of like they sling too. They <laughs> sling. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. It's the one. <laughs> but the swingers community there, one of their symbols is 
pineapples. So if there's a pineapple maybe on their door or kind of decorations, that has been a symbol of swingers. And you know, that kind of pisses me off because, like, <laughs> first off, if you know me, you know my favorite fruit is pineapples. And I, love pineapples. I have, like, necklaces really, really and things like that that have pineapples on mm -hmm. them. So, you know, I just wear shit around. <laughs> like, I had a phone case that was a yeah. pineapple. Uh -huh. And one of my friends was like, Why are you wearing pineapples? I'm like, like Girl, I love that? pineapples. Right. right. And there, that's when I found out, like, that was, like, the symbolism of, mm -hmm. um, of swingers. And I'm just like, you know, kind of thinking back, like, people I've met in the past. We're mm -hmm. not going to talk about that whole situation. Yeah. But it was just like, hmm, was I wearing a pineapple necklace at that time type shit? But that's I, hilarious. So she probably thought you was a sweet girl. Or she knew that you didn't even know what that was the symbol. Shit, I, <laughs> I, I was like, back, in, back when that happened, I didn't know anything about life. I was so sheltered when it came <laughs> to certain things. So <laughs> that's what's kind of funny about it. Uh -huh. But for those who may not know, Brittany, what is a swinger? Swingers are basically a group of people that they come together and they switch. <laughs> Which meaning like, you know, the most times they're married or in relationships and there are communities of people that come together and they literally switch partners. So like if I was say if I was married or whatever and there's another married couple, I would be with their husband and then their wife will be with my husband. Do you see thing. how this ties into our topics of getting tested? <laughs> like for real. <laughs> like if that's your lifestyle, by all means, get tested. If that's the lifestyle you're gonna live. I hope they do. I feel like that should be <laughs> a norm. They got swingers clubs, right? So I'm sure walking in the club, like show your papers type yeah. thing. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I don't know. That's a uh that's a unique party. Uh yeah. I don't I don't have any experience in swinging. Me I, I don't plan I don't to plan ever. to I don't want to. I'm not interested in that. But if somebody, you know, I would like to hear that perspective. Anybody listening, yeah. you want to come on the show and talk to us. Like, we Is there any benefits to it? Like, does it keep everything spicy as people, you know, think? I could see it keeping it spicy. spicy. Um, I think you have to be very secure in your relationship. You have to because if you are a person that like, no, that's mine, you know, that mentality, it's not going to go over well. But I also feel like a lot of people do it because they feel like they're gonna lose like they significant other yeah and like to said, cheating or something like that but isn't that cheating at the same time well not really if, if you're allowing it so okay so do you think you don't think like having threesomes and stuff is like like kind you see your cheat. man right over there a little bit too, too much, much. <laughs> Now, like, you already know how I think about it personally. Don't be like... You already know what I think about it personally, but I'm over here trying to play devil's advocate. It's so I guess, hard. I guess that's a, um, a way to have fun in a relationship, but I, I just couldn't. I feel like you can't have a threesome if you're in a serious relationship. No. That's me. If, to me, I, I think to me, I think it could really work if it's, like, just a casual dating. And you don't really have no real intentions with that person. And y'all just want to have some, like, wild, freaky fun. I think that would be cool then, but if you're really committed to that person and you're really only thinking about that person and nobody else, and then you invite mm -hmm. somebody else into a relationship to me or in that um, threesome, you're just inviting trouble into a relationship to me. I think so. I, I think I can agree with you on that. I had to be like agreeing with you on everything, but no. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I, like when I'm in a relationship like this. I'm all in. Like, I yeah. only want, like, you. I don't want no, no other distractions, no other parties. And I no definitely don't want no other woman on top of me. No. <laughs> That's the last thing I want. If I don't want to see that already, just us in public, why right. don't I want to see y'all naked? <laughs> no, I do not want to see that any parts. Do you remember watching the game? Yes. When Melanie tried to do that with Derwin? And she saw how, like, the girl was, like, kissing him a little too much. And she was oh, like, yeah. get out. yeah. Yeah, see, nah. I would have been Melanie in that situation, we, too. I don't it even think I'd make it that far. No, I'm about to say, it wouldn't even made it that far, but I'm just saying, like, I would react the same way as Melanie, but knowing me, that wouldn't even went down, period. I said, I apologize. <laughs> like I said, if anybody that done had a threesome... You know, open our mindset, you know, enlighten us. We would love to hear that perspective, and if there are some real true benefits of a relationship when it comes to threesomes and open relationships and say, swingers. Perspective. Perspective. <laughs> yeah, we, we need... We, yeah, I, I love hearing different perspectives, you know, especially just don't want to be saying mm -hmm. my own kind of views and stuff. 
Now, Brittany. Yep. What else we got to talk about? <laughs> True. We didn't talk about everything. <laughs> we tied it all together. We got get tested. <laughs> Both STD and COVID. It's important. Entanglements and situations are dang near the same thing. Mm -hmm. Open relationships and swingers are very similar. I said the most important yes. thing. Get tested. Get tested. <laughs> because you're quarantined. Yep. We know y'all being nasty. Yeah, because ain't nothing else to really do. Because outside open a little bit, but like. You Hopefully you being nasty with the um, the same person because I'm in y'all quarantine. Like how you uh, <laughs> you ain't supposed to be going out anyway. I hope you're not <laughs> trying to really um, experiment so much in this in this pandemic. I, I hope say, you have at least a consistent. I'm gonna say it's been real hard for the cheaters because <laughs> they can't go nowhere. Nope, That's you true. can't really. I mean, if they really want to, they can. But I mean, like you're taking a huge risk right now. Yeah. Not only just regular STD risk, but like you have a whole pandemic mm -hmm. um, respiratory virus risk. <laughs> yeah. Well, y'all, y'all better make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, relationship dot ish. ish. Email us if you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas at ask relationship was it dot, dot, ish dot ish at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. So that is ask relationship dot ish at gmail dot com. Yeah. And if you want to be a guest on the show, hit us up. DM us. Yes, you know where to find us. And we about to wrap up this thing. Uh-huh. All right. It's been real. It's Brittany. It's Simone. And this has been Relationship-ish.